What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Pro Cyclist. We're now a 77 overall rider. We made it to that in the previous episode after making it to level 19 and today we have the classics coming up. So of course we had Milano San Remo. Difficult episode in the last one to be honest. We really struggled at Tirreno Adriasco. Top 10 at Milan San Remo. It was okay. Not great though of course but today we are in Belgium. We have E3, Gent Wevelgem, Dwarves Dorf Vlaanderen and then we are going to conclude with our first Ronde van Vlaanderen. I cannot wait for that race. And throughout today I'm pretty sure we are going to be riding in a support role. We of course have Anthony Turgi and Peter Sagan in our team. They're both coming to E3 which is the first race today. They are the clear two leaders in our squad so we're going to have to try and help them out, try and help them win, uh, maybe do some lead outs or even go in the breakaway. And well we join the race and our DS wants us to take to the breakaway as well. So here we are up the road early on we have Anthony Toji on a plus three day today. Wow, I've never seen this. We literally have 21 riders in the current state of the breakaway. Was that Lawrence Narsen? Okay, so I don't think we have a massive favourite up the road, but 21 riders, the Pelson behinds are chasing, but can we hold them off here? I honestly can't remember seeing a start to a Cobble Classic like it. A look at the energy of the Pelson. Still we have 19 up the road clinging on to this lead, and it is Lotto Sudal currently chasing us in. Ultimately then, that group was caught, so we are up the road just with Patrick Gamper and Matteo Jorgensen. Three and a half minutes is our current lead. So this is definitely getting fun. We are now tackling iconic climbs like the Tyenberg right now. We do have some attacks from behind. Bouvan, Dagenkolb, Van Asbrook as well trying to bridge to the front of the race. Okay, those guys have now joined us at the front and it really looks to me like getting ahead of the race early on here was the right move because we have plenty of energy. 60k still to go. By the way, Sagan is behind but he did puncture so very unlucky for him. Oh no, and now Antonita G has fallen behind. Steve Arco, Brelli as well. Oh, we've been so unlucky today. Now Sven Bistrom has joined us at the front. We have a very select group behind as well. We get 100% on our breakaway objective. And I spoke of us really being a domestique throughout these races, but already it looks like we're being thrusted into the leader role within the team. We're now on the Passerberg then. It's Van der Sander behind Moscon Sturven from the Peloton. I think Terji is now back into that group. So he has done pretty well here today, but we are now piling the pressure on. And of course, it's not a true cobbled classic in Belgium without the Eau And now we have Gamper, Jorgensen attacking onto the foot of the climb. And the original trio who joined today's breakaway are now ahead of the race. Yet again, let's continue pressing on here on the Eau What a climb this is. So we're going to hold on to that slender lead. Gamper, Jorgensen and myself. But behind, Wout Van Aert has now bridged to the rest of the breakaway. He's dropped everyone else, I think, from the Peloton. What a rider, Seneschal is chasing two but Van Der Poel he's caught behind at the moment and here he comes Wout Van Aert has just dropped those riders he was with and there he goes there goes Wout Van Aert we need to try and follow this man as another rider is gone Jorgensen is gone and surely we cannot work with Wout Van Aert here we have to just try and follow as Jorgensen on the counter attack actually so we're following Jorgensen's counter this is now getting very very difficult Indeed, I'll pull a little bit with Wout Van Aert, but I'm struggling now for energy massively. And the four riders here, Gamper and Jorgensen, are surely going to have to rely on Wout Van Aert. Who is bridging behind? It's no one for the moment. Or Tij Benut trying to come across. Sturven, there is Van Der Poel as well. And it looks like I'm the only one of the original breakaway actually trying to help Wout Van Aert and this group stay away. Here comes Tij Benut. He's now joined us at the front. I can't really work anymore. And there goes Wout Van Aert. I cannot react to that at all. Instead, we're going to have to try and follow uh, this group behind. There is Sturven as well. Van Der Poel is here. Wout Van Aert has gone solo. We're going to have to sit on to the wheels now. Okay, so it's going to be nine riders back together. We have Moscon, Van Der Poel, Askren, Benut here. Gamper, Jorgensen, Sturven as well. And of course, I cannot follow these constant attacks. Wout Van Aert has been left caught out again. Can we follow that? Oh my word, myself, Gamper and Jorgensen have been caught napping here. There go the favourites, it seems. Oh man, 14k to go and I think we are officially cooked. So let's go to aero position. Maybe try and get back in later on. But now clear, it's Matthew Vanderpool at the front. And sadly, we're not quite up to it. 
Okay, four kids go. We have now been caught by a second group on the road, and it all comes back together suddenly. There is Moscon, and Moscon strikes out late for victory. Only three kids go here. My word, suddenly, and we're back in this race. Two and a half kids go. Our energy is pretty much empty. I'm on Alberto Betiol's wheel. Doesn't look like the best wheel in the world. Let's just try and go for the line here, but I think. I think Gianni Moscon is going to win in Harold Becker today. Let's see. Across the line, there is Gianni Moscon. He wins today. E3 Harold Becker. And it is going to be, I think, Askren in second place with Tij Benutz on the podium. We just miss out on a top 10. But what a race for us here. That's why we love the Cobble Classics, guys. What a race. Wish we had that little bit extra to compete here today. Maybe for a podium or even the win. But what a performance. Only plus five. We deserved a lot more than that today. Stepping in due to the unfortunate mechanicals for Terji and crashes of Peter Sagan as well. And great news again. It keeps coming this episode because we get the beginning of our fitness peak ahead of the Ronda, ahead of the Arden Classics as well. But first, it's Ghent Wevel Gem. Really, really difficult. Windy race today, as you can see. Wout van Aert is the favourite for sure. Sturven is here. Mohoric as well is a big favourite. Surprising to me. Lots of sprinters in and around as well. I'm not sure Caleb Ewan will be strong enough to win this race. Anyhow, we'll be riding, I think, for King Peter Sagan. So again then, I've been given the role of taking up the race at the front in the breakaway, but I'm struggling to do that for the moment. And you can see I've spent a lot of energy already trying to get up the roads. Okay, we are at the front then with Luca Pacioni, but this really isn't the breakaway I imagined at the start. And we are now entering these massive zones exposed to winds. Look at that. This is a bit more like it then. We have a couple more riders up the road here. All right, the breakaway are now approaching the Katzberg and the end of this windy section. Looking back to the peloton, still 130 riders, no massive echelons, but definitely some big energy spent. So again, being up the road finally when it formed looks to be the good move today. Although now we only have 40 riders in that group behind. Really quick tempo. Tosh van der Sander is there. And only 40 and only Sagan from our team as well. Look at Sagan's energy compared to mine. Are we going to be the leader again here? Because obviously the point of joining this breakaway is really to be a satellite rider for Sagan. But if his energy is that bad already, I'm not going to drop back at this stage of the race. I was hoping he would be able to join me and still have plenty of energy without me having to drop back as we seem to enter Belgium here. Anyway, 70k to go. The breakaway now down to four with the Camelberg uh, paying the price for Tabaka and Pacioni behind. They are not coming back today. And Mora, he's almost gone. He's pretty much gone here. Again then, another day where we get 100% of our objective from the DS. 170k we've been in the breakaway today. Still a minute back to the Peloton. 37 riders are there. But this time we have so much more energy than we had at E3. So the final real efforts today are approaching we have the Kemmelberg and I think we have enough for that only 18 seconds and there is the Pelson we have been caught and Sagan come on mate hold on to this group I know it's a tough day for you but stay here and I will lead you out hopefully to victory all right then we're over the Kemmelberg Wout van Aert is over the Kemmelberg but I'm afraid to say that Peter Sagan is not over the Kemmelberg in the front group or he's back he's back Peter Sagan is back should I protect him should I ride for myself? Should I try and lead him out? I don't know what to do here. I think we'll just try and conserve like he is at the moment um, and see where we're at in a few kilometres. 54 mountains, 69 hill, but that 73 stamina could be playing a role today. And here's at the front of the race. So there's no real reason for us to press on as Tim de Klerk certainly isn't pressing on there. Sagan, by the way, recovering really well. So now the inevitable attacks come ahead of Wevelgem. There goes Ida Schelling again. Ida Schelling has been everywhere in this playthrough as well as in the Uno X playthrough, to be honest. Here is Sagan. Hopefully, mate, you can take my wheel and you'll be confident enough in that. And I think I'll put you in a good position. But there goes Schelling. Let's get in his wheel. Okay, 5k to go. I am starting to run a little low on energy. There is Sagan. There is Christoph Laporte. What a team Yumbo have here at Ghent Wevel Game this year. Peter Sagan trying to follow the very front of the race. Let's go. 85. Should I counter? Should I counter? Should I counter right now? Shall we go for victory at Ghent Wevel Game? We're going to go early. But I think these guys are in our wheel. And now we're definitely leading out Peter Sagan. This is all for you, Peter. Where is Sagan? Sprint for victory, my man. Here comes Sagan. Hopefully going for the line. And it's not even going to be close to victory. 
for Peter Sagan. Of course, it's Wout Van Aert who wins the head of Caleb Ewan. Sagan, where were you? Breaking news, Wout Van Aert is good at cycling. Peter Sagan used to be very good at cycling, but here he was on a bad day, only P11. I thought the chance to attack was there. Apparently, not quite. Another good showing for us, though, here on the cobbles. Really showing we're more than a pure puncher. So, towards Dorf Landeren is next. Looks like a potentially easier parkour this season around. So, uh, Wout Van Aert, of course, is the favourite. That goes without saying. But Peter Sagan is here for us. I don't think we have Anthony Terji. So, myself and Sagan, probably the dual leaders here. Because uh, I think the hill stat is probably going to be quite telling today. That was my idea, at least. But it seems like Peter Sagan is going to be bossing us around. We are a teammate for Sagan I'm not sure, man. And I say it every time, but so strange to see Uno X as a race in this save, of course, due to the career mode. Videberg is here for Team DSM as well. Uno X legend right there. But who does Uno X have? They've got Rasmus Tiller. And he's not in the Norwegian Champions jersey. What's going on? I'm not even sure who some of these guys are. Chris Halvorsen here as well, though. And this is why. I mean, we've made the split, the 23-man split, 45k to go. But Sagan, where are you, my friends? Apparently nowhere. 23k to go. Or sorry, 23 riders are here. Well, for now, of course, still here. We're just going to stay sat in this group for now. I mean, to be fair, he is back now. But 54 riders are here. If this comes in for a sprint, we'll have to try and lead Sagan out. We know he's better there. But I will maybe try and follow some attacks, if any, go off. And so 13k to go now. Eunice Rich has gone on the attack. Team Mobile Legend right there. Only 28 now in this group, or 29. Sagan still hanging around. I am in Wout van Aert's wheel, and I am not moving unless we're pushed off, which we are right now by world champ Ivan Garcia Cortina. Let's go there instead. Okay, 6k to go. I followed more moves. And again, we are at the front. Sturven, Van Aert, Stefan Kung, Ida Schelling again. He is there. Ivan Garcia Cortina, the world champion. And myself, I'm following right at the back. And we are not taking this in a sprint. So I'm going right now with a massive counter move. And we have gone for victory here. Oh my word, at Towards the Vlaanderen. Are we going to hold on? Have I gone too early? Potentially, we are all in for this move. The gap. It's 20 seconds. I don't dare turn around. And oh my word, I think we're going to win towards Dorf Landeren. Let's just continue pressing on to the line. And what a victory. We win towards Dorf Landeren ahead of Wout van Aert. A perfectly timed attack. Oh man, that was so satisfying. I remember we really struggled when we joined Yolo Kometa last season. But we are really enjoying our time at Total Energy so far. We've won Strada Bianca, now we've won Towards Dorf Landeren. Is this the year we come of age? Oh man, that was such a satisfying move. Pulled off to perfection, if I say so myself. And it is that time of year now. We're into April, which does mean contract season is upon us. However, I'm almost certain I want to stay at Total Energies at least next year and probably in a couple more years to come as well. So uh, just to let you guys know, I won't be showing any of this because I'm 99% sure we'll be staying at Total Energies in 2024. Well, 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 this is the one we've been building up to the Ronda. It is the Tour of Flanders. Matthew Van Poel, a former winner, is the big favourite, of course. We have Sagan, we have Terji. And we just have the Dwarves Dorf Landeren winner as well. Let's give it a go. And well, we have been given the role of Barrader by our DS. So he expects we will be allowed to take to the breakaway again, despite just winning Dwarves Dorf Landeren. Let's see if we're allowed. All right, and we have successfully joined the break again then. And it's cool to see Unorex legend Suren Wernschgold up the road. Kevin Jennietz, pretty good rider. Andre Carvalho as well. So I'm um, pretty happy with the composition of this group. And I mean, I was happy with it, but there was literally no working together in that group. That was such a nightmare. Now we just have two riders at the front and we are not there. Chris Froome is dropped already though. Oh, what a shame. And now we have a bunch of counter-attacks going. So frustrating. I just need to recover energy uh, before we get to the cobbles for real. But we have Mateo Trentin, the world champ, Ivan Garcia, Cortina, Michael Matthews, Stefan Kung. Some very good riders. Now Tim Wellens trying to get to the front of the race. My word, GVA has gone. Ida Schelling, Marcus Hulegaard has gone as well. 
And looking a bit at our leaders' respective form, both good days, but Peter Sagan, 92% fitness, whereas Anthony Terji has a really nice fitness peak, 99%, 82 cobble on the day. He is surely our team leader. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to try and bridge with these guys to the front of the race because it's turning into a very strong group. Can I join Tunison, Rousseau and Christoph? I need to really because we have 14 riders at the front. 14 very good riders with Christoph, Tunison, Janssen as well trying to join them. It's going to be a very good group. So let's try and bridge right now to these guys using the aero position right here on this little climb. My word, that was such a big effort. Finally, we are here though. Now 17 riders at the front. Let's just sit up in this group. I'm not contributing. I don't have the energy, but what a super power group we have with two minutes on the peloton right now. And here we go then. The first descent of three, I think, of the Udaquamont. And we arrive with one minute 30 on the peloton. I think our personal race is pretty much destroyed, but we need to be able to drop back later to help Terji and Sagan. So we're still at the front of the race alongside the rainbow bands, literally clinging on if we can for dear life. Because behind, Peter Sagan is actually looking after Anthony Terji himself. We can't get a look apparently. Um, but Peter Sagan giving himself up today to work for Anthony Terji. And oh man, I can see Ivan Garcia Cortina. Look at his energy. He's on a plus five day. Ida Schelling as well, a plus five day. No wonder the tempo in this group is so high. We have some riders on huge race days. Let's see Michael Matthews. He's looking very good as well. My word, we're going to struggle with Terji later on. I was feeling pretty good, but looking at this, we could have Ida Schelling winning the Ronda here. I'll tell you what, guys, the longer this race goes on, the more I think the winner is coming from this 13-man group. Two and a half minutes now back to the peloton. They are nowhere to be seen, despite the firepower they have there. Van der Poel, Van Aert, they're all still there. And at this point, I'm trying to work out what I would do if I was the manager of the team and not this pro cyclist. Would I drop myself back to help that group? I'm not sure. Now there are attacks going off the front. IGC, Wellens, Ida Schelling as well. I think our time to drop back has probably come. Let's see if we can hold on though. So we have Ida Schelling, IGC and Tim Wellens with 25 seconds now on the chasing group from the breakaway. Again, I cannot work. I cannot help these guys. I'm just a number from Toto Energies. We're just trying to mark these guys out as best we can. Right here it comes, the Kapelmoor followed by the Bosberg, the final efforts of the Ronde van Vlaanderen. I've tried to recover as best I can. Let's use that sneaking and try to cling on up one of the hardest and shortest climbs in cycling. Less than a kilometre, but huge percentages, and I can see already we're done here. So there we go. We are gone from the front of the race. It's time to sit up, definitely, and try and help the group behind catch these guys, but I cannot see it happening. There they are then, up the road. We're caught exactly in between both groups. Hopefully we'll see Anthony Terji attacking over the top over to us and we can bridge him to that group at the front. So we're over the Bosberg and we are now back in this group. There is Terji. I think I'll just drop back to protect him for the moment. Let's try and protect Anthony Terji. He still has two minutes to the front of the race. We need to do some pacing. We don't have the energy for that though, I'm afraid, as he's choosing to follow attacks instead. So we're going to offer up some brief protection to Anthony Terji and we are cooked now for the day for sure. Surely this group is it going to be Amstel Gold again with Van der Poel bridging back to the front of the race. But we still have 10 riders from that breakaway here and Ida Schelling is on the move. This is it then, the dive for the line. Ida Schelling going for the Ronde van Vlaardrum but it is going to be John Dagenkolb. He wins the Tour of Flanders. What a race that was. Ida Schelling in second. Tom van Asbroek in third. It was that breakaway deciding the race by a mile in the end as well. Van der Poel, Van Aert, they were nowhere today. Another epic race today. Really enjoyed today's set of races. But John Dagenkolb, who would have called that before this one, wins the Ronde from Vlaanderen. If only we had a little more when we joined that breakaway. We spent just too much trying to get in the eventual breakaway today. And uh, we missed the move when it went straight away. So, um... Really, for the team, I would say a day of what could have been with Taji, only 14th place, a little disappointing. And only a plus three points for our efforts today. Nonetheless, um, like I said, four really 
fun races. In the next one, we kick things off with a monument in Paris-Roubaix and we finish things with a monument in Liège with some other very interesting races in between. And that's the final episode before we head to the Giro d'Italia. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash that like button down below. Which was your favorite of today's four races? Let me know in the comments below. Hit subscribe as well if you're new to the channel and I will see you in the next one.